Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and it looks like I'm stuck in space inside my EVA suit. Oh my god, what's happening? I do not know. This is a game called Adrift, but we're not playing it just yet. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting challenge from NASA known as Space Poop Challenge. That's right, you heard me right, Space Poop Challenge. Sounds interesting, sounds funny, but it's actually something that, if you win, might uh, make you about $30,000 cheaper. If you're interested, keep watching the video. We're going to talk about this using this video game, and I'm going to discuss the details of this challenge. Welcome to What The Math. All right, so we're starting the game and basically here we are a survivor, uh, a female survivor um, on some kind of a futuristic space station some uh, sometime in the uh, no, near future. I think this is actually year 2034, possibly 2035. And here we basically have to go through these challenges, not challenges, but basically go through these various um, destroyed hallways and try to basically collect uh, information, try to collect data and try to collect various tools uh, to survive longer. But I'm not actually going to play this game just yet. We are going to finish it at some point, um, but not just yet. Today we're talking about the Space Poop Challenge, and this is why I thought this was a perfect game for this. Here you are inside an EVA suit. Now you may obviously know that you need to breathe, you need to drink, you need to eat to survive, but we also need to uh, poop, we need to pee, we need to actually um, expel various fluids from our body in order for us to live comfortably. And this is a big challenge in space. As a matter of fact, for the past uh, several years, um, the technology when it comes to uh, this type of problem has not really changed very much. Um, today, astronauts use diapers in space. Doesn't matter if you're male or female, doesn't really matter if you are old or young, it doesn't actually matter where, what kind of uh, policy you have regarding diapers, but you have to wear them when you're doing EVAs, you have to wear them um, on critical missions, and I think I'm totally already lost, I don't know where I'm going. Um, you have to wear them no matter wh what you do. And interestingly, um, it's not a perfect solution. You probably would not really want to wear a diaper for prolonged periods of time, especially if it's a catastrophic environment like right now. If, if I'm stuck in space, and I'm wearing a diaper for like two days, it is not going to be very comfortable. It is not going to be not only uncomfortable, but it's it's actually potentially dangerous for me because um, if any kind of a liquid escapes my diaper and ends up in one of the orifices or uh, some kind of a um, scratch in your, uh, on your skin, it can seriously infect you. It can actually cause a serious infection that may lead to um, to death, basically. Uh, Alright, so we're going to float through this game a little bit. I'm not actually playing this seriously just yet because I want to do this as an actual playthrough later on. Um, but here we're going to just talk about how difficult it is to deal with these types of problems um, related to uh, essentially extracting uh, bodily fluids from, uh, from a spacesuit. Now, so because of uh, all of this, NASA decided to come up with this really, really, really interesting challenge for essentially what you would call, I guess, uh, citizen scientists or citizen designers out there for innovators. And there's quite a lot of people that have already joined in and tried to uh, basically join in on, on the fun. But uh, currently, uh, as of November 2016, there's about 30 days left to create and design a very, very uh, um, innovative and unique system that uh, routes and collects human waste away from the body, uh, hands-free for fully suited astronauts and not only is this going to be um, innovative and obviously uh, change the the future of space exploration but it will very likely also uh, create a lot of technologies uh, for us here on earth as well as a matter of fact you may not know but uh, diapers the baby diapers that you all used when you were young were technically kind of unofficially inv invented by NASA long back in the days or at least improved by NASA so the diapers we use today with all of the technological um, advances in them are technically NASA's uh, invention. Uh, because back in the days they needed something for the astronauts and so they've invented these really interesting materials to create diapers that would actually absorb um, quite a lot of liquids and quite a lot of fluids from the, uh, from the spacesuit. My poor character is already lost and is probably going to die of suffocation. And this is, of course, not exactly what I wanted to do in this particular video, but you know what? It's, eh, it might happen. But anyway, so let's actually talk about this particular challenge. So the problem is that, obviously, 
you may end up um, in a spacesuit for many, many, many hours, and you may end up uh, needing to go to the bathroom. Like, for example, if you're doing EVA for about 10 hours, which is not uncommon, repairing something outside of the uh, sp um, space station, you may need to go. You need to may go pee or poop or something in between. Or uh, if you're a female, you might actually end up having your period. And um, because of all of this, uh, NASA decided that they finally needed to implement something that will actually... Uh, change um, the way that they've been doing this sort of business. Uh, they've decided that it was best to actually ask the public, ask the um, creative individuals out there, including possibly schools and universities, to come up with some kind of um, innovative design. And uh, the design has to be um, relatively uh, simple, but at the same time, work quite efficiently for up to 144 hours, which is basically several days. This is meant mostly for um, a, uh, an emergency situation, like a case where there is what you see right here, essentially, where you're stuck in space, the space station is broken, and it will take a few days uh, for NASA to, um, to come and save the astronauts. And so in the meanwhile, they need to be able to... Um, they need to be able to not only survive, but essentially stay comfortable and not be affected by their own um, their own wastes. And here, what the, uh, NASA is looking at is basically a system that is uh, both autonomous and also functions quite well inside um, an EVA spacesuit that I'm currently wearing in this video game as well. In other words, they are saying that the diapers are no longer a good solution. They want to get rid of the diaper system and they want to focus on implementing... Um, give, me, give me my oxygen. I want it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, I can't, I can't use this. I guess because my oxygen is full. Um, so they want to implement a system that will actually extract the fluids and uh, maybe even reprocess them, but they don't have to be reprocessed. They just have to be stored somewhere for up to six days, and it has to be an autonomous system that fits inside the EVA suit. Now, obviously, there is a lot of problems, which is why NASA hasn't come up with one yet. Uh, all of the commercial um, so sources so far are unacceptable, and of course, the problem are... The problem was mostly stemmed from the fact that this is microgravity. There is... Uh, everything is floating. The liquids and the gases behave very differently from how they behave on Earth when there is gravity. And because of all of this, NASA decided that it was best for... Um, uh, all of the mines to combine themselves into one sort of solution and try to... Uh, basically reward the best uh, team, the best group that comes up with an interesting, innovative uh, design that we'll be able to implement in, uh, in space later on. And uh, one of the biggest challenges for this particular um, challenge is that um, it, it has very specific requirements. So here you have to be able to function for six days. It has to be able to um, provide urine collection up to one liter per day for uh, per crew member. Uh, also be able to collect fecal matter, which is poop, uh, or about 75 grams per, uh, per day, and uh, also collect menstrual blood as well. And all of this has to be uh, functioning for about six days. It has to also be uh, autonomous, meaning that you um, you have to be hands free, and you don't have to you have to be able not to use your hands because your hands are actually stuck inside your spacesuit. And at the same time, all of this has to have enough power to to function for six, six days as well. And they are actually planning to implement the system on their future um, EVA suits, known as Modified Advanced uh, Crew Suit, also known as Macy's. Uh, that will actually be replacing the um, current model, which is known as the orange suit that, uh, that has been used since the space shuttle launches. And I actually want to stress the importance of this type of invention because it would definitely uh, in, uh, include technology that will be able uh, will be able to reuse on Earth as well, and of course it will also um, increase the interest in space travel and space exploration, and very likely. Um, help us uh, develop technologies to make um, uh, space travel, but or not just space travel, but actual colonization of other planets, and um, of course, uh, space tourism, tourism a lot more comfortable as well. Because, you know, who would want to wear a diaper for a few days? No matter how rich you are, you want to be comfortable, right? Um, all right, so we're now in some kind of a new environment here, and I don't really know what this is, but it looks like I'm going this way. All right. Now, the prize itself is actually not as much as I guess you would want it to be, but you know what, $30,000 for just a schematic is actually not too bad. And the actual eligibility for this award are quite uh, quite simple, actually. So your design has to be able to... Um, 
excrete all of the liquids and matter away from important areas for about 144 hours. It has to be able to operate in microgravity, basically in zero gravity. It has to also operate um, in a specific pressure condition in a 100% oxygen environment. And look at these beautiful droplets right there. Um, and um, because it's an oxygen environment, it means that you can't have any sparks, otherwise your suit just explodes. Um, it also has to allow the crew member to easily operate without noticing the actual device. It's also uh, important that this particular uh, device can be easily inserted into your spacesuit within five minutes, especially in case of an emergency. And lastly, it, uh, it has to effectively operate um, with any kind of a person. Doesn't matter what size you have or doesn't matter what uh, dimensions uh, your body has, uh, you have to be able to operate it quite easily. Uh, so the size of the person should not be an actual problem. So we're going to repair our EVA suit right here and continue our journey. Um, and there's actually a criteria rubric for uh, for the winners as well. So a specific rubric uh, will focus on things like soundness and technical readiness of design, um, gas conservation, health and safety, suit integrity, speed, ease of use, comfort, ease of in incorporation into the suit, and of course other benefits. And all of these together will um, provide the, the points to your actual design. So basically it's kind of like being graded by a teacher. And at the end of all of this, you'll receive your points. Um, and if you have the highest points, your team wins and you get the money. And there's actually several prizes as well. So, um, so it's not like you, there's only one winner. Um, and to enter this, you just need to be over 18 years old and be from a country that is not at war with the US. <laughs> I think that's the, like, the only requirement, which to me is actually, um, it means that NASA is finally opening up its um, resources to the international community and um, the actual design will probably be easily publicly available to other space agencies as well, which is actually really, really awesome. Now, let's uh, briefly talk about the deadline before I finish this video. And the deadline for this particular challenge is December 20th, um, 2016. So if you do have ideas and you want to try to participate, uh, check out the link uh, from HeroX.com. And um, it's all in the description below. R register, maybe make a team and try to come up with something really, really cool. Because honestly, this is one of the best um, design challenges I've seen from NASA so far. They had another one where they actually asked for different tools that can be 3D printed in space. And I believe a high school student from the US won that challenge uh, last year. Uh, but this particular challenge is open to everyone and it's actually a lot more difficult and requires a little bit more innovation and outside of the box thinking because you have to do a bit of research about how the EVA suits work how the microgravity affects uh, bodily fluids, and how to actually um, manipulate matter and liquids in space with zero gravity. Because, you know, liquids, they stick to objects in space. They don't just uh, float like they do on Earth. Um, a water dro droplet will more likely stick to your skin than, uh, than basically become absorbed by something. So that's why diapers are not an effective solution either, because droplets always escape diapers, which is kind of gross, if you ask me. And anyway, so that's uh, that's all I wanted to say in this video. I just wanted to talk about this really cool challenge, give you an idea of what the game called Adrift is, with a game that we'll be playing sometime in the future because it's so, so beautiful and so, so cool. And um, if you do want to participate, register uh, in the link in the description below. All right, I'll see you guys later. Let's actually float around a little bit more because uh, this game is really cool. And check out, I can even see my legs here. This is actually a game that's... Um, supposed to be for virtual reality as well, which I don't actually have yet. I don't have a um, virtual reality um, tool yet, except of course for my phone, which doesn't really do a very good job. Uh, but once I get either Vive or Oculus Rift, I'm definitely going to try this game again in virtual reality. And anyway, so uh, once again, check out the link in the description. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who you think might actually want to join you in this particular challenge or someone who might be interested in just doing it by themselves. And uh, possibly consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well because it does help me get better equipment. And possibly one day I'll be able to even afford an Oculus Rift, which I don't know if will happen anytime soon. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all your support. I'll see you in the next video. Give me later. And as always, bye-bye. And I'll see you in the actual playthrough of Adrift sometime after we finish Alien Isolation and uh, maybe um, No Man's Sky as well. Although I might just start them as a parallel playthrough as well. And give me that oxygen I need it right now. I'm suffocating here. Come on, seriously? Seriously? Here we go. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Give you later. And as always, bye-bye. 
and definitely join a Facebook challenge. You can make some money and then maybe send them to me via Patreon. Okay, cool.